Uh, thank you for the invitation. I'm sorry for the delay. Uh, so I will present a, a library to implement uh, a, a, a special type of uh, deep learning called Bayesian deep learning. So uh, before I present library, let me give you some background on the uh, Bayesian deep learning, why we do this. Uh, so this is, uh, a, is the most common form of deep learning we see uh, in many uh, applications. We call it uh, uh, discriminative deep learning. So it learn a particular function mapping from the input to output. So the most uh, famous example may be the, the convolution network uh, have been widely used, and uh, especially in computer vision. And this network, it, uh, this function is differentiable, so you can learn by grid design, okay? But there are some challenges. I think you already saw some issues from the previous talk. So for example, uh, we need a larger train data, a label train data to, you know, to learn. And also this uh, uh, network can be uh, uh, vulnerable to, to the adversary attacks. And uh, in fact, there was a competition in NIPS uh, on this particular task. And we, we, we did some uh, investigation of this uh, problem. And also deep network is uh, uh, hard to interpret. And, uh, uh, and also it's a kind of lack of a, a mechanism to, to model the uncertainty of the models and of the data. So somehow it can be overconfident in the predictions. I think it may be uh, also related to the uh, existing of uh, uh, adversary samples. And also uh, it's hard to deal with uh, like the uncertainty in data for the missing information. Okay, so this motivated us to, to consider some uh, like a probabilistic way to, to do deep learning. So this is uh, uh, what do we call Bayesian deep learning. Uh, so you kind of uh, uh, like to conjoin uh, deep learning and the Bayesian method and, or probabilistic method in general. So, uh, so deep learning is uh, uh, at one end of the spectrum and Bayesian method is kind of in the other end. So it's kind of uh, a, a, bit, a mathematical way to, uh, to characterize the uncertainty and to do the inference. And actually this uh, uh, has been pioneered by like, uh, Rafi Neal and Dave McKay in the, uh, the last wave of, of a neural network. And, uh, but recently there are uh, many progress. So, so in general there are two types of uh, uh, this kind of method. So the first one is so we, we can use Bayesian method for deep learning. For example, we can, uh, we can do Bayesian neural network uh, as uh, as done maybe uh, 20 years ago. So, uh, so the, I think the one issue try to address is that using Bayesian method to protect the neural network from overfitting. And uh, they are also connection with the Gaussian process and also some recent work on the, uh, like using non-parametric Bayesian method to do deep learning and uh, also to characterize uncertainty in, in the uh, in deep network, okay? But there are also another type of uh, uh, method try to use deep learning to, to have better uh, basic models. So this is uh, what I will focus on more in the rest of the talk. So, so one particular uh, popular example is called deep general model, okay? So this is different from super learning. So in general model, uh, the goal is that we want, we have some sample, uh, some sample data from the, from an unknown data distribution. And we want to learn a model to, to approximate to approximate the data distribution, okay? Then we can, uh, we can do generalization. We can draw new samples from the model distribution. Because this is what generative model uh, does, okay? So why is this uh, useful? Actually, in machine learning, we have an unsupervised learning task, right? So we can uh, learn completely from the unlabeled data. So uh, the related tasks are uh, like uh, clustering, density estimation, or feature attraction, or dimension reduction, right? So many uh, applications. Uh, so also it's related to semi-pure learning or weekly, weekly super learning in general. So you have some, uh, some kind of missing information in the data. So you can use a general model or you can use a density estimate, uh, estimator to, uh, to track some information that can use for, uh, for, for learning, okay? So I just listed some people uh, in, in my group recently, but there are, there are many others in the, in the literature. And also there are uh, kind of special type of a general model, uh, for example, conditional general model. You have some particular inputs, and then you generate another kind of output, okay? Uh, so, so we, we consider a deep general model. So basically, like a deep network, it's, uh, it has a multi-layer architecture, okay? So this is not a new concept. So, so like the traditional uh, uh, basic modeling, we have the hierarchical way to, to define a model. 
So, so this is just highlight some idea. Uh, so basically, we have a set of random variables. And then we can define a hierarchical um, uh, architecture to, uh, to uh, characterize the dependent structure of, among the variables. And then uh, according to the factorization theorem, we, we know that the joint distribution is factorized over some, le some local factors. And uh, in the traditional way, the, each local factor, uh, including some marginal or some conditional distributions, are, are normally a, a, in some simple form. For example, you, uh, you, you put in a family, maybe. Okay. But recently, uh, this idea has been generalized. So, so this is what I say we use deep learning to enrich, to enforce the, uh, the, deep, the basic models to be more powerful. So, so, uh, so this is the basic idea. So we, have some, we can start from some uh, simple variable, for example, uniform or, or standard normal variable. Then we pass through a deep network, okay, which define a function right, to transform the, the variable to another one. So, so we know that so the, the transformed variable will be, uh, we have some, some density function maybe much more complex than the original one, right? So for example, Z variable, okay, it's simple, but X can be complex to, to fit our data, right? So this is the, the basic idea. So here I show you some uh, quick examples. So this is a very simple example. I, stand up, I start from some, uh, a standard normal uh, Z variable, then I pass through a fully connected network with two layers. Then you can use the output units as the parameters to define a noisy model for the, for the observation, for example, for x. So here, for example, if x is continuous, you can use a normal, uh, normal likelihood to generate data, right? So this, is, uh, this model has a implicit a noisy model, but here it's, uh, it's causing noise. But you can also to be uh, very more general. So I, I don't have an implicit likelihood model. So I can just define, follow a stochastic process I start from, uh, again, start from some simple variables, then pass through some function transform to get uh, samples of uh, uh, some complex distribution, right? So this is, uh, this is, this is what we call implicit models, okay? Again, we can apply deep learning here to, uh, to be the function transform, so we call it implicit deep models, okay? So this is, uh, 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 it has many applications, for example, uh, in general uh, uh, natural images, Okay, this is uh, uh, one example. So we can, uh, we can learn a function uh, to transform a, a normal, a white noise to, to generate a, natu uh, a nice looking uh, natural image. And uh, uh, you can also manipulate so the latent factors to disentangle the different factors from each other. For example, for first generation, you can, uh, let's say, they, maybe I have some latent factors to, to be related to, with the post, and maybe some, some other variables for other factors. So this can still be uh, learned from data, okay? Uh, so in general, you can, you can post other structures into the uh, generative model and do the learning and the inference. Uh, so this is the, the modeling, very powerful, but the, the most uh, difficult part is on inference. So we need to do the reverse direction inference to, to get the portrayal of the latent factors. So this is uh, uh, where we get, the, we get to understand the data, right? From the, the input observations, we try to disclose the, the latent factors from the data. So a very classical rule is called base rule. We can, we can do the portrayal inference to get uh, the latent factors. But this is uh, the, uh, where the technical dif difficulty arise. Uh, so for the, for the inference, we normally uh, have two, two types of methods. One is called virtual inference. So the basic idea is that uh, maybe my, my target portrayal is very complex to deal with, or maybe not in some analytical form. I, I want to find some, uh, some approximation, okay? I, I have a, a Q distribution, we call virtual distribution to approximate the target. And the Q, the Q distribution may be in some family, that can be uh, in some simpler form, so that I can do the optimization easily. Okay, so so this is turn uh, turn to a optimization problem, and uh, then you can apply like a stochastic gradient design to the version objective. So this is so called ver uh, stochastic gradient version inference. And for the deep drum model, uh, there are many work on 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 defining the uh, the version distribution. Right, so you can you can. I still use another deep network to approximate 
to characterize the, the version distribution, and then you do the joint inference, joint learning. Okay, this is the version inference. But still you have, uh, uh, you need to do a lot of uh, deviations for a single model, okay? So another type of method, uh, uh, the, the, what the last uh, uh, talk had been, uh, had mentioned a lot, is called um, Markov chain and color. So, so in the, uh, for the complex model, especially in the high dimensional space, uh, the most powerful um, color method may be uh, using gradient, gradient information. For example, uh, Hamiltonian um, color or other uh, related methods. So they basically need to uh, calculate the gradient, maybe some other information uh, of the distribution to, to, to define the dynamics, then, then do the simulation. So again, you still need to a lot of deviations and a lot of uh, implementation details for a single model. Okay, so in general, this is what we, uh, we are facing, right? So we, for, for a single um, uh, deep general model, we need to derive all the equations and uh, check the uh, correctness and then we implement every details from scratch. So this is uh, a, a very painful and uh, uh, can be uh, very easy to, to be wrong, okay? So, so this motivates us to design a library to, to save the time, okay? So we, uh, the idea is that we, we try to turn the uh, mathematical deviation into some in very intuitive programming because our target is like probabilistic models. So we call it probabilistic programming. So this is a, a, a hot topic in machine learning. So if you go to NIPS, you, you see the, a workshop on probabilistic programming. And so, but, uh, so we, we, we're targeted to the, the very recent Bayesian deep learning models. So uh, this is where we are, okay? So this is uh, uh, we, the library we call it Zhu Xuan. So it's uh, in English it's called Abacus. So it's, a, uh, it's maybe the, the oldest uh, calculating machine uh, in the world. So it's also in China, it's also known as the, uh, the fifth greatest innovation. So, uh, okay, we, we use the name just to uh, stand for the calculation, okay. So we hope this to be uh, a, a library for, for basic methods and also for deep learning, of course, and their, their, their uh, intersection. Okay, so, so uh, the library is, uh, is a Python, it's uh, uh, implemented in Python, and uh, especially for, for deep job models. And we build on TensorFlow uh, from Google. So very nice uh, uh, framework for, for deep learning. So we, uh, we uh, so, so this library is, uh, uh, has some different features, especially for the, uh, for basic inference, for probabilistic programming. So we, we support the uh, hierarchical basic models uh, very traditional models and also the recent deep jump models. Uh, so on this, you can you can use uh, uh, multi GPU to, to do the training to have a fast training, and also you can use uh, the the language of probabilistic machine learning to 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 model to define the model uh, uh, for different problems, and uh, you can plot the on-level data. You can also uh, deal with uncertainty uh, by doing Bayesian inference, and you can of course generate samples. Uh, how to implement that? So we need some uh, uh, some interface to represent the models. So here, we, what we use is called BaseNet. Okay, it's uh, a direct network. It's our general language to represent uh, a big family of models. And uh, in order to support these models, we we have two types of nodes in the library. So determinist nodes, uh, uh, particularly for the for the neural networks. Okay, we we can inherit the, all the uh, all the TensorFlow operation to support you know, network. And uh, in particular, we have the stochastic nodes to support the distributions and uh, to do the inference. This implement uses stochastic tensor. And uh, uh, so all the operations are uh, in parallel with uh, the uh, tensor operations in TensorFlow for, for neural network. So this, uh, with, uh, uh, this library actually is very intuitive to implement our model. So I will give you some quick example. So you, you first import the library, the so Jusan library as this. Then you start a, a, a environment, base net environment. Then you can define the model. So here is a, a one example. Uh, this is the cover version order encoder. I have a, 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 a maybe I start from a, a stand normal variable. Then I pass through a two layer uh, fully connected network. Then I generate my data. Here I consider maybe binary data. So we have Bononi likelihood model. Then you can, you can write the implement model like this. 
So it, it's basically uh, the same as the the, uh, the language you 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 write the general process. Also, it's uh, very similar to as a graph. You just follow the the direction of the uh, the, the arrows. So for example, I, I define the extend normal variables z. Okay, this this is stand normal. So we will zero mean and uh, uh, identity coherence, and then I pass through the variable, uh, pass through one. Oh, sorry, this should be z. Pass through one fully connected layer, then I pass through another fully connected layer, to be the the logics of the uh, uh, before we send to uh, do the sigmoid transform. Then we can we can draw the uh, the observation using Bernoulli distribution, right? So it's very intuitive, just like uh, what we write for the uh, for the equations. And then the question is uh, how to do the inference. As I said before, this is the most uh, difficult part. Uh, so we, we, we support version inference and uh, uh, I'm going to color. So for version inference, it's standardized in three steps. So again, so for uh, the, uh, so the first step is to build a, the uh, version portfolio. So uh, depending on the, the, the model you have, uh, this part may be, uh, uh, may be customized. Uh, and then we can call some objective, for example, stochastic gradient version uh, inference. We have the SGVB, and uh, then we can run optimization. Okay, we can do grade descent, just like we optimize uh, a, a neural network. Okay, so um, so the the for the users, the uh, uh, most of the work it will be uh, on defining the version portfolio. So here is a uh, uh, one example. If I do version of the encoder for the previous uh, uh, two-layer model, so you can define the uh, the version of the portfolio like this one. So I assume that the the latent variable uh, they will be a normal distribution with some mean and uh, uh, coherence. So this mean and coherence will be some function of the input. Okay. So then you can still use uh, if I define this function as a, a, a fully connected network. So you can. You can do like this. I have x as the input. Then I pass uh, pass x through a fully connected layer. I I get to the I pass through another layer to define the mean and the the uh, uh, the, the 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 log stand deviation. So suppose uh, it's a diagonal metric. So so you can define the uh, uh, the current metric. Okay. Then I get the the parameter of the normal. So this is my normal for the uh, for the latent variable. Okay. So this is for the for the continuous. I can I can define it in this way, but in general, in the in the uh, deep neural models, I can have a continuous latent variable or, or discrete latent variables, right? So on, in this library, we support both. Okay, for for the continuous latent variables, we use uh, uh, we we have a stochastic gradient version base. Uh, we we also even have a better one like using important sampling to have a tight bound of the version objective. And for the uh, uh, for the discrete uh, latent variables, they have uh, so we, so we can still use uh, some technique to uh, to estimate the, the objective and the gradient. Okay, so but the uh, the difficult part here is that we need to control the variance uh, uh, of the estimate using finite samples. So there are some nice one like uh, uh, the reinforce algorithm. Okay, and uh, uh, also some score function estimate. So we can we can use so this for the for the uh, discrete uh, models, okay. So then the, the optimization can be can be done just like we use a stochastic descent for deep neural model, uh, for deep neural networks. So it's uh, it's very standard. Uh, so for the uh, Monte Carlo method, we implement uh, we support the uh, Hamiltonian Monte Carlo HMC. Uh, so uh, this uh, this sample can be implemented like this one. So we, we, we create some variables to, uh, to store the samples we will draw, and then we can initialize the HMC sampler okay, with some step size, and leave, uh, leave frog some initial values. But the, the, the algorithm uh, can uh, automatically uh, tune the step size, so you don't need to worry a, a lot about the initial value. And also, the uh, uh, so leave frog and, uh, step size is not uh, automatically tuned right now, but there are some uh, nice algorithms to, to automatically adjust the, the, the step size. Okay, so so then you can you can call the uh, uh, the sample uh, operation. 
So then you can just uh, run, uh, you try to run this sampler to, to collect uh, the samples, okay? So when this um, um, the Markov chain uh, mix, you will get uh, the sample to approximate your, 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 your target distribution, right? So this is the, uh, the general idea. So, so for the uh, HMC, the gradient, uh, the gradient from, uh, information we need is automatically uh, derived using the uh, library, okay? So just, just like inversion inference. Okay, so, so right now, so, um, so we, uh, we use, uh, we put this library as a research platform, so, uh, so it's uh, basically uh, to support the, the basic method and deep learning. And uh, uh, we have implemented some state-art models, so, so like uh, uh, this one, including the traditional uh, basic model for logistic regression or basic neural networks and uh, also the, the basic version of the recurrent neural network. Uh, for the version of the encoder, we have uh, the, uh, the vanilla version and also the convolutional version. So basically you have a uh, convolutional neural network to do the function transform. And, and even there are some semi-supervised version uh, uh, with the version of the encoder. And we also have the discrete variables like deep, uh, a deep sigma different network. And we also have uh, the, the GAN network and uh, Gaussian process, of course, and uh, some other traditional uh, hierarchical models like top models. And we, we are still working on more examples and also uh, there are some other contributors to implement uh, more models. And this is uh, a, a quick comparison with uh, uh, some other library uh, with a similar function. So, uh, so the, the most uh, important two are the Edward from uh, Dave Blair Group in, in Columbia and also there is PyMC3. So uh, all this library, I, I try to use uh, uh, GPU computing to support the very efficient basic inference. And some, uh, some libraries support the, the conjoin, conjoinment with uh, deep learning, okay? Uh, but we have some difference. Uh, so I think the most important one is that uh, for the, uh, for the Edward and the PyMC3, they, they uh, put all the details uh, within the library, so the users are not aware of uh, the algorithm. So, in in in, uh, in other words, so users cannot actually define their own algorithm. They they don't have a lot of freedom to define their own models. Okay, but in in, in our library, it's, uh, it's transparent. It's modular and also transparent to the users. So you can uh, you can uh, intuit very intuitively define your model. You can also customize uh, the, the algorithm you use uh, for inference. And there are also some technical difference, like uh, for Edward, it, it, it doesn't support, uh, it built on TensorFlow like uh, our library, but it doesn't support all the operations uh, on TensorFlow, like uh, the control, control flows. So, uh, so the, because of this, there are some models they cannot implement on the Edward, like uh, the recurrent network, you, can, you cannot in implement the the basic recurrent uh, neural network on the on Edward, but in, in our library we, we uh, support all the operations, and we are flexible to define the models. Uh, so the library, everything is uh, open source. So we put it on the GitHub. You can find uh, uh, the uh, the source code by searching the name, and also we have some documents to, uh, and also tutorial to to give you some. Uh, uh, some example, quick example to start with and uh, uh, to, to understand the uh, deep neural models. Okay, so this is a, a quick summary. So, so basic deep learning is a, a kind of direction try to conjoin the, the uh, complementary advantage between deep learning and the basic method. And in particular, the, the, the deep neural models, uh, they use deep neural network as a powerful function feeding I uh, think can uh, uh, represent uh, very complex distributions. And uh, our library uh, provides a, a Python programming interface, so you can e intuitively implement the model and uh, also can do the autograding uh, uh, type of uh, uh, inference. And uh, so if you're interested in, the, in, in this library, you can find more details on the white paper. Uh, so because I, I, I was delayed, so so I finished the talk a little bit earlier. Thank you. So, question?
Uh, is Pyro, is this uh, library similar to Pyro? You know the Pyro library? Pyro? Pyro, yeah. Pyro from Uber Ad Labs. Um, is it for business first? I'm not sure about yeah, that. It's a flexible, scalable, deep probabilistic uh, oh, oh, I need to check. I need to check the details. Yeah, so, so, yeah, yeah. So, so the, as I said, so the most uh, uh, similar libraries are the Edward and uh, PyMC3. Maybe it's some, some new. I will check the details. Maybe I get this. Uh, no. Uh, so, so because uh, because uh, because of time, so we 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 just released. I think we just released this library in in last uh, June, but we 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 started that project on use TensorFlow. But but we can easily uh, move to this library because. Uh, Oh, that's a right, right. That's a long story. So, so there's there's some some work that shows that if you do Bayesian inference, you can somehow be more robust to adversarial noise. Yeah, you consider model uncertainty somehow to do the average. You can you can more robust. But for the uh, for the algorithm we win the competition, uh, we, it's it's different. It's similar to uh, the previous the, the the morning talk. We 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 start from the denoising. So we, but we have a, a kind of um, fancier denoiser to to reduce the adversarial noise, but it's, it's not busy. <laughs> yeah, but we will try maybe. Okay, we are a little bit behind the time, so let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.